So I am Kenan Calera Salonero. I'm the founder of Yamana Science and Technology. We're a nonprofit that's formed to create critical conversations for creating a shift in the systems of science so that we nurture our young, so that we interact effectively with society, so that we interact effectively with ourselves, and so that we address the problems that there are that we wish to address. I want to repeat how unusual it is for all of us to be in this room, at this place, at this time. Because I know it took something for each and every one of you to get here. You got yourselves here. You've paid your own way. You've stopped your busy lives. You've left your families behind while you're here working on a Sunday and a Monday. And you're away from your workplaces. And the question is, why would you do that? So I assert it's actually for the Liam Holtz of the world. And I want to tell you about Liam Holt, because thank God for Liam Holt. Liam's sitting back there, and I hope I'm not making him blush too much. But about a month ago, this event, with all the planning and all the thought that had gone into it and, and relationships developed, was not looking like a very good idea. It was, I was asking people to disrupt their lives to disrupt their work, to be unreasonable. And only a few people had committed. And I was ready to just call the people that had and apologize and say, I'm sorry, never mind. And I couldn't, because Liam Holt, I knew, had already bought his ticket. Liam Holt was introduced to me by Rebecca Smith at UCSF. She let me know that there is this conference going on called Let's Have an Awesome Time doing science. Liam was a postdoc and at UCSF Mission Bay campus had created this conference so that he could convince himself that it was worthwhile to stay in the industry of science. Liam is a very gifted scientist. The good news is it's very worthwhile for us to stay in science. However, this has become an increasingly difficult choice for those who earn their PhD. It is an increasingly difficult path for those who are junior faculty. It is a career that remains steadfastly resistant to effective integrated collaboration. So something has inspired all of you to be here today. I can't point to what it is. I don't know who we have in the room as to why you each individually decided to come here, but I don't, do know who we have in the room. We have great authors. We have great facilitators. We have great scientists, great researchers, great trailblazers, thought leaders, communicators, engineers, and policy advisors. Each of you has been blessed with some special gift, and each of you has something special to contribute to this conversation. I'm speaking today to some of the brightest people that I know. Because you are here today, I know that you have the desire and the inspiration to accomplish what is needed to fulfill on the promise of science. With courage, creativity, knowledge, and new ideas, we can change the reward to effort ratio such that there's less effort, less loss of talent, and less personal cost in being a scientist. I'm going to present you with a short quote from the National Academies of Science Interdisciplinary Report from 2004. The literature that this committee has reviewed suggests an evolution in modern research toward greater complexity. If that is valid, researchers need organizational and career structures that are suitably flexible and carefully designed to support this trend. Yet, they note that the current systems create a persistent drag on collaboration. We as members of society are looking to science to solve puzzles, to invent, and to discover. We as scientists have committed ourselves to fulfill on this promise. Through an interplay of not only service, products, and productivity, but also basic human elements of creativity, discovery, joy, and understanding. 
It is these elements that bring us together. However, I assert that if you only have the element of service and the element of solving problems, and you lose the other ingredients, for some reason the human element doesn't ignite. You do not have the passion that you need. The challenges of today draw us forward, demand our ability to work together, together rather than separately, communally rather than competitively, collaboratively rather than just collegially. We are at a point of accelerating change in society. In the book, The Power of Pull, How Small Moves Smartly Made Can Set Big Things in Motion, by the authors John Hegel III, John Seely Brown, and Lang Davison, the authors clearly describe the old culture of push. They assert that this mo mode of work is failing, quickly moving into a vacuum created by emerging ideas and new ways of working. Let me read to you how they define push. Push, becoming a standardized part of a predictable machine. Some elements of push are, there's not enough to go around, elites do the deciding, organizations must be hierarchical, people must be molded, and bigger is better. They go on to acknowledge that knowledge flow is greater at the edge, where people are wrestling, wrestling with how to match unmet needs with unexploited capabilities and all the uncertainty that that implies. What they call the big shift includes the ability to transmit tacit knowledge. I believe this is an apt description of a highly performing research organization as well. This requires long-term trust-based relationships Edge participants place heavy emphasis in building diverse networks of relationships that will help them to more effectively collaborate with others. The authors assert, we are now in a different era, one where edges emerge, emerge and rise up with astonishing speed to catalyze, catalyze change on a global scale in less time than ever before. Today, you actually will be uncomfortable at times. I've been uncomfortable a lot of times in this work. I've learned that a lot of the journey of change is about dealing with being uncomfortable. And this can range from mild irritation to true emotional pain. However, it's our vision for the future that can draw us forward while remaining uncomfortable. I personally feel that what science has before it is a golden opportunity of more strongly developing its own roots, the ability to learn, to explore, and to discover together, but at a new level of complexity as demanded by current reality. I'm not alone in this thought. Jim Spohr from the Almaden Research Center of IBM, a quote from him, Real-world problems do not respect discipline boundaries. As the challenges the world faces become more complex, collaboration is the key skill for the 21st century. Likewise, Leroy Hood of the Institutes for Systems Biology holds complexity as one of the grand challenges for the 21st century. To conclude, gently paraphrasing from the power of pull, we can see real risks ahead on the path towards pull, but the true danger is that we will ignore the growing risks of remaining where we are today. There is no doubt that this will be a difficult journey, that there will be unanticipated setbacks. The risks that lie ahead of us may be hard to measure. It is completely understandable that fear would hold us back. Our hope, though, is that by exploring the power of pull, we can enable ourselves to overcome that fear. And I say by exploring our own ability to work together and our own passion for the future, we can enable ourselves to overcome that fear, to understand and accomplish the real opportunities that lie ahead. In short, 
The power of pull is not an option. It is an imperative that we ignore at our own peril. Ultimately, we believe that the positive incentives shaped by the rediscovery and pursuit of passion will draw not just me, not just you, but all of us on this journey. And that's what I have to say. So thank you.